by a show of hands, may I ask who here have vision problems like short sightedness or long sightedness? Okay, thank you so much. Wow, that was a lot. So today I'll be showing you how to improve your eyesight. Now you might be wondering, how does this have anything to do with our main topic today, artificial intelligence? Well, wait till the end and you understand why. Now, to be honest with you, I don't know anything about technology, especially AI. So I have decided that instead, I will be discussing about the effect of artificial intelligence on human experience as a user or just a very ordinary person in general. Now, who here used Tinder? Anyone? It's not bad. Okay, that's okay. Anyway, in 2017, during an interview about the future of dating app, Sean Rapp, Tinder's co-founder, have said that five years from now, instead of scrolling, searching, and swiping, he thinks that these devices would be intelligent enough to just give you the answer. Now this was four years ago, and now it's becoming a reality. There are now apps that can match you up with a partner immediately. And all of these apps, they all use the same tool, which is called Recommender System. And it's usually considered one of the most valuable applications of AI. Now Recommender System, what it does is that based on user data, suggesting our using behavior, location, or browsing history, the machine would predict and then show us information that it believes we would be most interested in seeing or buying. Facebook is using it, as well as YouTube, Twitter, Reddit. Now, all of those apps that I've just mentioned, they all have one goal, is to keep us, the user, scrolling for as long as possible. So in order to do that job better, the artificial intelligence have to become, well, more intelligent. And however, sometimes these machines, they're so smart and precise that it gets kind of creepy. You know, it feels like we are constantly being spied on and who knows how much data they are extracting from a private life. But of course, this is not going to be the main focus of my presentation because these powerful, great technology, they come with an even greater cost than that. Now, the world is just a click away. Fun fact, I took this picture just right outside of our school computer lab. Now, I agree with this quote, but my question is, the world that the internet is opening to us, is it really a whole new world? Or is it just a world that we have been already, already familiar with? Because think about it. Every day, when you go on social media, the AI is just going to expose you to information of topics that you have shown interest in before, meaning that you're less likely to experience with new topics. And this can lead to a phenomenon called filter bubble when an internet user is being intellectually isolated by a machine. Now, just imagine, instead of sharing one world, like one physical world, just like we are doing right now, you know, you can see this pen, I can see it, everybody can. But now, because of these online personalization, each of us now have their own unique universe of information, meaning that what we each see is very, is far different from the others. And it can be even further from the truth of the reality. <clears throat> For example, who here believes that the 5G is damaging our health and it's spreading the corona coronavirus? No one? Yes. Well, apparently we're all smart, but there are people who still believe in those silly things. Now, I used to wonder, why do these information spread so fast even though they're obviously false. Well, as it turned out, AI has figured out that we humans are very prone to clicking to articles or videos that contain conspiracy theories. And that is why 
the recommended system is putting all of these information on people's new feed. Now, besides distorting people's point of view, based on my real experience, there is another thing that can result from these phenomena, and that is anxiety. Now, I have regular breakouts on my face, and with all of the comments that I receive from people around me, you know, saying, what's wrong with your skin? It looks bad. I feel insecure and oversensitive sometimes. So every time when I go on Instagram, on the Explore tab where it shows you random photos based on your interests, I would click to photos of girls that have like flawless skin and amazing body, wishing that I can be a little bit more like them. But the problem here is, the more I click to these photos, the more of the same type keep appearing on my newsfeed. But at the same time, the more insecure and bad I felt about myself. Now, you know, when you have to see one thing for so many times, even if you know it's bad for you, or even if you know it's not true, you're still going to click to it anyway. And that's exactly what happened to me, which has worsened my anxiety to the point that I decided to quit Instagram. Nice wing tone. <laughs> anyway, now, of course, this is not going to happen to everybody. And you might say, well, just another typical teenage girl problem. Well, yes, but there has been other internet users who have experienced the same thing as I did when they felt overwhelmed by being exposed to the same content over a period of time. For example, Sashi Gupta. In one of her articles, she had described how at first, she only clicked to a couple of stories about protests in India. And then for the next 20 days, her whole social media were flooded with pictures, photos, posts about protests. And quoting directly from her, it was an emotional and cognitive overload. There's only so much that one can feel and consume. So after 20 days, have to consuming this type of content. She felt so anxious and stressed that she too decided to quit Instagram. Now, I usually hear people say, including myself, that social media is toxic and that people are just faking things to look good on there. Well, yes, but no, because maybe it's not completely their fault or the machine's fault that we feel bad, we feel insecure about ourselves. Maybe we, it's partly our fault too, because machine learning, they learn from our own behavior. And because of that, we still have control over what we see on social media to some extent. So back to the title at the beginning, how to improve eyesight, how to enable ourselves to see more of the things outside of our bubble. Now, unfortunately, I have to tell you that using my method, you're not gonna get 20-20 vision. Well, it's not like we want 2020 back anyway, right? But what I'm trying to say is that I don't think we can break down this whole system completely. But what I do hope we can at least do is firstly, be aware that each and all of us are in this kind of situation. And secondly, by actively seeking for new information. So say next time when you go on social media, try to click to post that you didn't find interesting before, or try to watch videos or read news for another source. Don't just limit ourselves to what is being provided to us by the machine. Because I believe that life isn't just about enjoying the comfortable or interesting part, but it's also about challenging ourselves. And who knows what we might have missed outside of our bubbles. Thank you.